this potentially is one of my favourite topics in chemistry. Electron configuration is, I find, absolutely fascinating. Um, this video I'm going to talk you through what the electrons do, where they all go, how they decide where to go, where they spin up, where they spin down, um, and then I'm going to give you loads and loads of examples. You may be familiar with drawing electron configurations like this. In shells, an electron sitting nicely on those shells. This calcium has 20 electrons. I'm going to write, use this shorthand for electrons from now on because I'm going to be writing electrons a lot in this video and I want to use shorthand. And then this is a different way to describe how the electrons sit in the shell. With two in the first, eight in the second, eight in the third, and then for calcium, two in the fourth shell. We need to make this model a little bit more sophisticated sophisticated now. From now on shells are going to be energy levels and each energy level has subshells. So the first energy level has one subshell. The second energy level has two subshells. The third energy level has three subshells and the fourth energy level has four subshells. The first subshell has the lowest energy and as we move away from the nucleus the energy levels with in the shells get higher. So the first um, energy level, the one subshell, is the S subshell. The second energy level has an S and a P subshell. The third energy level has an S, a P and a D subshell. And the fourth energy level has an S, P, D and an F subshell. To understand what a subshell is, we first need to think about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which tells us that for an electron, we can only ever know the location or the momentum. We cannot know both at the same time. If we look at the first energy level, which just has our S subshell in it, so we're just looking at the S subshell, and this applies to the S subshell no matter which energy level we're in. This is a sphere. We're previously used to drawing this as like a flat 2D circle, but that is a very false impression because that tells us or suggests to us that we know where the location is going to be, that it is going to be fixed within this limit that we've imposed on it. But quantum physics tells us something completely different. This circle is actually just a statistical representation of the most likely places for an electron to be. But electrons can actually be anywhere. They can be close to the nucleus, they can be far away from the nucleus. We draw it as this 2D circle because that's just the most likely statistical probability of where the electrons are going to be found. In reality, they can be found anywhere. They are just most likely to be found in this sphere. The p-orbital is a dumbbell shape and the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is true for this as well. That we get the shape of it because this is the most likely statistical probability um, location for the electrons to actually be. But in reality they can be anywhere around, they just happen to fit into something that looks like a dumbbell shape. There is one S subshell in each energy level, and this is shaped like a sphere. There are three P orbitals, a dumbbell shape along the X axis, a dumbbell shape along the Y axis, and a dumbbell shape along the Z axis. Within each subshell, there are a number of orbitals and each orbital can hold two electrons. So our S subshell has one orbital, it can hold two electrons giving us a total of two electrons in the S subshell. Our P orbital has, P subshell has three orbitals times two electrons gives us a total of six electrons in P orbitals. There are five orbitals in the D subshell times two electron gives us 10 electrons sitting in the D orbitals and there are seven F orbitals. Two electrons in each gives us a total of 14 electrons in F subshells. 
when we are drawing electron configurations, this is the format that we are going to draw them in. So this is our energy level. Our nucleus is going to be down here. We are going to draw them. These are our subshells. This is our first shell with one subshell M. This is our second shell with two subshell ends. This is our third shell or third energy level with three subshells in. This is our fourth energy level with four subshells in. Each of these little boxes represents an um, orbital. When we are filling up the orbitals we need to start with the lowest one and this is the alpha principle. We need to fill singly and this is Hun's rule. And they all need to have opposite spins. And that is the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, I have summarised a large chunk of um, quantum mechanics very, very briefly here. So I do apologise to any um, physicists that I've annoyed by simplifying things so much. But for the purposes of drawing electron configurations, we just need to know these three rules. The first example I'm going to show you is oxygen, and oxygen has eight electrons. So we are going to start at the lowest energy level. We are going to fill singly, and they're going to have opposite spins. And the electrons are going to be represented as little arrows. So there's our first electron. We're starting lowest. We're going to fill singly before we fill doubly, and they're going to have opposite spins. Now, because I've drawn this one upwards, I need to draw my next one downwards. Now I feel that energy level, I can move to the next energy level, which is the 2s1. My two electrons in there have opposite spins. Now while I filled that subshell, I can move up to the next subshell. But you'll notice there are three orbitals in this subshell and I need to fill singly. So one goes in there, one goes in there, and one goes in there. Now what I have is two electrons here, two electrons here, and three electrons here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need another electron in. So I can't move up to the next energy level yet because this energy level isn't full. So I have to go back to the first orbital, put another electron in there, but it needs to be of the opposite spin. So that is how we draw the electron configuration of oxygen. I'm going to draw it for you down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because some um, teachers' examples like you to draw it like that. The other alternative is writing it. So 1s2. You can see that in our 1s orbital there are two electrons. 2s2 in our 2s orbital there are two electrons 2p4 but in our 2p orbital there are four electrons argon next argon has 18 electrons um, i'm going to do this exactly the same way one two that energy level is full so i can move up three four that energy level is full so i can move up five, six, seven, feeling singly before I feel doubly, eight, nine, ten, that energy level is filled up and notice how they all have opposite spins, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Or writing it out, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. We can treat ions in exactly the same way we have um, treated atoms. So a chloride ion is going to have 17 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Or 1, S, 2, 2, S, 2, 2, P, 6, 3, S, 2, 3, P, 5. The noble gases are special um, and this is represented in their electron configuration as well. So argon has 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You'll notice we have slipped over into the 4S before we have filled the 3D is because we need to start with the lowest energy level. And the 4S energy level has less energy than the 3D energy level, so we fill that one first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, S, 2, 2, S, 2, 2, P, 6, 3, S, 2, 3, P, 6, 4, S, 2. Last example here, and I'm going to end by showing you a way to make this a lot easier. So nickel has 28 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 20, 27, 28. Um, I'm not going to fill this in for nickel because it doesn't go far enough. But I can write 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d8. Now, you may have noticed that it's getting a little bit repetitive. And this bit here is exactly the same as the electron configuration of argon. So to make our lives easier when we write this out, we can use the noble gases as shorthand. So we can say the electronic configuration of argon, or whichever noble gas you want to use, plus 4s2, 3d8 which is a much shorter way of writing out um, nickel as opposed to all of this